Hey everybody, it's the Prez, Lawrence Presman, uh, co-founder of Wager Talk Media, owner of wagertalk.com, sportsmemo.com, and the iconic gold sheet. A different show today. Uh, normally, Teddy Covers and Dave Koken are with us, uh, except I had a bit of a family emergency this morning and couldn't tape at our regular time, and both Teddy and Dave are busy uh, for the rest of the day. So we brought in Ralph Michaels, and let me tell you, uh, I feel like that's a win. Uh, Ralph Michaels, welcome to the College Football Betting Show. We're taking apart 15 games, five deep and 10 quickly. And while you're going to do all the heavy lifting today. Hey, no problem. Uh, college football is what I live for. So happy to happy to sit in for Teddy and Dave. And uh, I'm sure our viewers will be happy to have them back next week. Yeah, and they will be back next week. Morning Joe was canceled on Tuesday. It'll also be canceled tomorrow. The bottom line, Ralph and everybody is, um, I just haven't been able to get the sound issues right. And, you know, everybody is just, the the comments about the sound issues on YouTube are killing me. It's as if, as if they think that I'm not trying here. I have bought a new computer. I have hardwired my computer in. I'm using different software. I've bought a different mic. I've bought a different camera. I have a mixing board. I've had three different techies come over. I have added to my Wi-Fi, but now I don't use it anymore because we're hardwired. Um, I have spent way too much time in my life working on sound and I'm pretty much fed up. Uh, we're not going to have any commercials today. No scroll on the bottom. We're literally going to get straight to college football talk. But I do want to assure everyone, this is the last week of the sound. I had uh, some techies over last night. We have isolated the issue. The issue was on my MacBook. It wasn't powerful enough and the fan would kick in uh, to to um, so the computer wouldn't overheat. And once the fan kicked in, it started affecting Skype. And that was what was uh, giving us sound issues. I'm still on the Mac today. So my apologies if there's sound issues today, but I actually have uh, isolated the issues. And as a result, hopefully by tomorrow with my new computer, uh, everything will be perfect. Uh, Ralph, let's just get straight to it, man. Michigan on the road, uh, playing against Wisconsin. The line is minus three and a half. Uh, for Wisconsin, the over and under is 43. And uh, Wisconsin has just been incredible so far this year, an amazing 2-0 and start to the season. And uh, there's a lot of talk in Michigan now. Harbor is on the hot seat. This team is underperforming. Nobody could see how they could even beat Ohio State this year. Uh, I think they're going to struggle against uh, Wisconsin this week. As I said to you, you're going to do most of the analysis of the analysis this show so take it away, my friend. You can't argue with them. They're struggling. They've now failed to cover six straight games. Last week against, uh, you know, last week against Army was a game that went down to the wire that the, fa the players, it, it looked like they pulled an upset as excited they were to win the game. That's an issue for me. Yes, you can say Wisconsin's played nobody and outscored them 110 to nothing. But I'll tell you what, there's a lot... There's a lot of teams that played worse opponents than USF on the road in Central Michigan. I look at this, and Wisconsin has covered four straight at home in the series. You look at what Michigan did on the road last year. At home, they outgained foes by 200 and yard, nine yards per game. On the road, they only outgained foes by 69 yards per game. And the most interesting fact I found about this game the last 13 times Michigan has been an underdog, they're 0-13 straight up. They have not pulled an outright upset since 2013. And most of those upsets were only as a two or a three-point dog where you expect to win 40% of the game. The only concern I have is this. Preseason, my power rating number said Michigan should have been a four-point favorite. Preseason at the Golden Nugget, Michigan was about a five-point favorite. That's a big swing only two weeks in. And are we adjusting Michigan too much because of perhaps they were holding some back, some things back, the first two foes they faced? Uh, that's a great point, dude. I mean, w what is your gut feel telling you? You think this Michigan team is going to turn it around? 
Well, because of what they did last year, because Michigan's history, if I had to make a bet, it would be Wisconsin. But I am clearly not one to bet into an eight-point line move. I know. And even what my power ratings had preseason just after two games. Uh, he's Ralph Michaels from wagertalk.com. I'm the Prez from wagertalk.com, and this is the College Football Betting Show. Uh, Ralph Auburn finds themselves on the road and a plus four against Texas A&M. Man, I mean, Auburn, lucky to beat that, win that game against uh, Oregon way back when. They're the ninth seed, according to the polls, playing the 15th seed. This is a very important game for both teams. Um, I would say more so for Auburn. Texas A&M's already 2-1. and one. They've got a loss to their name. Uh, they're going to struggle to make the playoffs, but Auburn needs to sweep out here, and they're 3-0. and oh. Um they're also 3-0 and ATS, Ralph. Uh, both teams are 3-0 and uh, ATS. Where are you going with this one? I like A&M, and the technicals agree with me. You look at A&M, they've become an absolute moneymaker. They are now 16-4 and against the spread their last 20 games. They're 7-0-1 oh, as a home favorite, their last eight in that role. And you look at Auburn, they're 2-7 and seven as an away dog, but... As I say all those numbers, I will say that the road team is 6-0-1 ATS in the series. The reason I'm backing AM is Kellen Mond is much different at home than on the road. And with Auburn, you have a true freshman, Bo Nix. Yes, he got the win against Oregon, but in that game, Bo Nix was eight, excuse me, 13 of 32. And then the next week at home against Tulane, Bo Nix was still only 19. For 37. This AM team is a team that can get pressure. They've got a great front seven, and I'm going to play against the true Frosh making his first true road start. You know, Ralph, one of the amazing things about college football is the line moves. I mean, we talked about the line move in the Michigan game, and you look at this Oklahoma State Texas game. Texas, the 13th ranked team in the country, a two and one record. Uh, they came out at minus nine and a half as an, a consensus opening line. It's been bet to minus five. Uh, there's a lot of money coming in on Oklahoma State. Three and O record would be a huge upset for not a huge upset, but a huge win for them. Uh, I know we've missed out on the line move, but looking at it from <coughs> a minus five perspective, uh, who you like in this one? Well, I don't like anyone, but if I had to make a choice, I would lean with Oklahoma State. Listen, Texas was not one of the top 20 teams. Everyone was just enamored with Ellinger. And yes, his stock rose with what he did against LSU. But this was still a Texas team that got outgained on the season last year. You look at what they did against LSU. Yes, they kept it close. But against La Tech the week before, they only had a 454 to 413 yard edge. Oklahoma State now has the dual quarterback Spencer Sanders, a great running threat, averaging 6.4 yards per carry. His completion rate is, is 67%. And, uh, you know, you look at Mike Gundy, you look at the mullet, he's 7-2 and two against Texas. He's dominated yep. the series. The road team has covered four straight. Oklahoma State is 8-1 and one ATS, their last nine as a dog. And, again, I, I just think that, Texas continues to be overrated. Yeah, but you know, the interesting thing about Oklahoma State, and we see this every single year under Gundy, is this team comes out flying. They're put up 40 points, 50 points, 40, 40, you know, on and on. They just can't be held back. And then they have one game where they ruin their entire season. Well, it is true that they, they traditionally play a very weak schedule. But you look at all the Power 5 teams this year, I don't know if any other Power 5 team has already played two road games. So it's much different playing on the road. So when you have a young quarterback like Spencer Sanders, he's already gone to Oregon yep. State, put up 555 yards. He's already gone to Tulsa, put up 505 yards. This is his third road game. That's a big boost and gives a young quarterback a lot of confidence. Ralph, another ridiculous line move. I mean, just explain this to me. Stanford comes out at plus one and a half. They're now plus ten and a half. That crosses three, four, seven, and ten. I don't think I've ever seen a line move this big. Um, 
They're hosting Oregon, 17th best team in the country. Oregon's 2-1. and one. They've won their last two games after that loss to Auburn. Uh, Stanford's bad, just outright bad. I mean, we got to handicap this game at 10 and a half. Uh, I ain't taking Stanford, man. I, I just, I'd rather pass than play that terrible team. I agree with you. And that one and a half was, was really a rogue number. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I'm looking at the game. The first line I saw was 10. So, you know, someone put up a very bad number and my power rating though was actually 11. So I think Stanford, just like Texas, was a team that I had about number 45, but they opened up the season ranked because of what they did last year. Well, let me remind people last year, they were another Power 5 team with nine wins that got outgained. It's not fluky that they went to UCF last week. That was one of my top plays of the weekend, and they just got outmanned. Their offensive out, out their goal, he's going to be a top 10 draft pick. You have a couple other injuries on the offensive side, but uh, there are certain times when you look at a series and because of the series history, you're afraid to go against that team. Stanford has won this series three straight, which you might say Oregon has triple revenge, but the Cardinal are also nine and zero as a home dog. So David Shaw knows how to slow a game down. Yeah, that's I look for sure. the I look for the under in this game, and with a lower scoring game, if you're getting a double digit home dog, you never can look past that. Yeah, it's like his wife is tw is texting him, "Hey, Dave, the kids need to go to bed. Slow the game down. Make it super boring." Dave's like, "I got it. I got it, girl. I know exactly how to do that. Just be me. Put out my really slow moving team, and the kids will fall asleep." Uh, guys, you're watching College Football Betting Show. A quick reminder, Dave Koken and Teddy Covers will be back next week. It's my fault that they're not on the show this week. I had a bit of a family emergency, uh, so I couldn't tape the show at the time that we have scheduled. And uh, Dave uh, especially uh, has a ton of media going on on Tuesday. And while you and Teddy do a show every day together on Sports Grid, do you want to talk about it quickly? It is. We do a live TV show. It's 12 to 1 Pacific, 3 to 4 Eastern. Uh, you can download the Sports Grid app and, and find it. We're starting to become available on some of the streaming stations. But really, it's from a Vegas perspective. We talk about bad beats. We look ahead to games. We talk about situations uh, to help you become a better handicapper. Uh, Teddy and I are now two weeks into it, uh, have had have had uh, great feedback and looking forward to making a long-standing show. Yeah, and it's a really great show, man. And, you know, I mean, between your analysis and Teddy, uh, the way he thinks, I mean, you guys really look at games very differently. Uh, you, you're steeped in numbers, very analytical. Teddy is more of a seeing-eye guy. Uh, the show, you guys complement each other perfectly. Uh, as you guys just saw, Ralph wiped his forehead with sweat. Do you want to know why? Because I made him turn his air conditioning off in his house in Las Vegas because it was making too much damn noise. Uh, Ralph, one more game uh, out of our top five and then we'll uh, look at the next 10 games super quickly. Uh, Georgia, my friend, this team, wow. And now they're minus 14 against Notre Dame. Uh, you know... I mean, it's the first real test for Georgia, and yet they're minus 14. Are they that good? Yes, I, I do believe so. You, you look at Notre Dame, and, you know, they're going to live and die on what Ian Book did. But Ian Book got sacked three times against the Louisville team. I think this Georgia D-line just eats them up. This Georgia D-line's allowing 2.1 yards per carry. And you could say Georgia wasn't tested so far this year. But going to play Vanderbilt on the road and having an SEC road game as your season opener does mean you were tested. That that takes something for your team to respond and play well. They ended up with a 481 to 225 yard edge. So certainly playing up to that. You know, Jake Fromm completing 75%. Well, anybody can complete 75% if your team can rush for 
300 yards per game and averaged 7.6 yards per carry. I don't think Notre Dame's defense is good enough to stop them. You saw Louisville gain 289 yards. New Mexico gained 212 yards on the game. Notre Dame's played two very weak foes, and they're allowing 5.0 yards per carry. Georgia does win and cover. Uh, just for the record, everyone, Mitch Trubisky could not hit 76% completion rate uh, if the Chicago Bears ran for 500 yards. Uh, if Mitch had one pass in the game, it would likely fall short. Uh, as well, Kirk Cousins would hit 76% if you included the other team's players in the end zone. Yes, Prez is still bitter, uh, but we'll talk about that on the NFL presidential address, which goes up tomorrow with Kelly and myself. Uh, guys, again, sound issues are being tackled. Uh just don't comment on them. Like, I'm, I'm literally telling you guys, stop commenting on the sound issues. It's not helping. It, all it's doing is pissing me off, to be bluntly honest with you, because I'm trying my hardest to get the sound right. These shows mean more to me than they do to the listeners. Uh, this is my life. And not only that, Ralph, I love doing these shows. I love talking football with you guys. You know, we are three weeks, less than three weeks away from hockey. We've got a hockey show that comes out every single day uh, at noon Eastern called Puck Time. Uh, we're changing the Morning Joe show to the Betting Edge, which is every single day, Monday to Friday. That, the new Betting Edge starts on Monday. I have another show with Joe Ranieri and Rob Vino, which is a, co a contest show where we're going head to head with all the viewers. Uh, so check that out. So if you guys think I'm taking this sound lightly, you are nuts. Uh, anyway, brother, uh, these games we're going to go through fast. Uh, USC plus three and a half against Utah. Uh, Utah, man, uh, this team is just tough to play against. They're tough to play against every single year. Uh, they know how to play defense, that's for sure. And USC is not the USC of old. Uh, plus three and a half, over and under, 51. Uh, what are you doing in this one? Well, we have a common opponent. Both played at BYU. Utah put up 362 yards, scored 30 points, but they had two pick sixes. So really, their offense only scored 16 points. USC put up 452 yards, scored 27 points. I like Keaton Slovis. A lot of people say he was only a three-star recruit. No big deal. He had to replace JT Daniels after he got hurt. Utah's best unit by far is their D-line. They have an elite D-line, top five in the country. The problem against USC this year is with their new offensive coordinator, Graham Harrell, it's a mini air raid. They get the ball out quick. They have three receivers that are going to be in the NFL in Pittman, St. Uh, St. Brown, and Carr. They have elite receivers. I think they have a quarterback who's back at home. Yeah, he threw a couple picks at BYU, but that was on the road. I like USC here. Uh, Boise minus eight, uh, total 55. They're playing Air Force. Uh, pretty big total for any game that Air Force is in. Boise is a surprise 3-0, and especially after their week one win. They're now ranked 20th. Uh, where are you going in this one? You know, this game's a toss-up for me. You look at Air Force, and, you know, they're off an overtime win at Colorado, so they're playing back-to-back -back weeks. And anytime you're playing back in the altitude, off an overtime game, very difficult situation to be in. But let's remember, this is an academy. These kids are going to be, you know, in the Air Force, in the military. They set a different pre precedence and they can handle this back to back road. Uh, you know, I'm going to say this. I'm going to take a pass in this game and say that I actually bet Air Force to win the Mountain West Mountain Division against Boise. So I need them to pull this upset. Yeah. Air Force has 14 starters back. That's a lot for an academy. We saw how well they played at Colorado. I think Air Force keeps it close and can cover. I'm hoping for the outright upset. Uh, Nebraska at Illinois. Uh, everyone did not think very highly of Nebraska last week. Uh, they looked good. They're playing Illinois now. Both teams are 2-1. and one. Illinois is plus 13. There's a lot of money coming in on Nebraska, Ralph. Uh, is yours? 
Yeah, I think the money's deserved. My power rating has it at 14, so I still think there's value. You know, UConn got off to wins against Akron and Connecticut, and then they played Eastern Michigan. Well, let me tell you what. My power ratings that are posted at wagertalk.com, and I put them up there every Monday, Akron is the number 129 team out of 130. UConn is the number 120 team out of 130. And Eastern Michigan, a team that they lost to last week, is only number 94. Nebraska, I think, will play better getting out of Dodge. You know, they had so much pressure on them week one against South Alabama. They had the lead against Colorado, and a 96-yard flea flicker got Colorado back in the game. They lose in overtime. The offense got going against a very good Northern Illinois team. They covered their last four Big Ten road games. They've covered their last seven road games overall. And I think getting away from Memorial Stadium in Nebraska will help them relax and play the type of offense they need. I still like the Cornhuskers, even with the inflated line. Uh, Ralph, uh, Michigan State, look, I mean, I don't understand how their coach has a job. Uh, every, <laughs> you know, in, in all seriousness, like I think he would be amazing if he was coaching like the Len Dawson-led Kansas City Chiefs or, you know, Bart Starr-led Green Bay Packers. I mean, this guy is literally the cure to insomnia. The, he might be the greatest defensive college football coach of all time on both sides of the field. I, I it, Does this guy have like heart issues where if he throws more than 10 yards, he has a heart attack, so he just doesn't do it? I am baffled at this team. I am baffled at this coach. Shame on them for losing last week. Minus 14, and they go and lose the game, and they were never in it. I mean, yeah, okay, they were in it by score, but they were dominated. This team is a nightmare. And now they find themselves on the road, minus nine and a half against Northwestern. Come on. Well, you know, the first thing that caught caught my attention in this game is a total of 39. Yeah, and dude, I, and, it could and be I, a total of 3.9. And, and I just tweeted this out at Cal Sports LV uh, since 2010, uh, excuse me, since 2016, when the total is 40 or less in college football, they're still nine and 18 over under 67% to the under. So don't think, oh, this total's so low. I can't bet the under. If the total is that low, it's that low for a reason. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say this, Michigan State, I can't trust their offense. I love their defense. We have one of the best underdog coaches in Pat Fitzgerald and the Northwestern Wildcats. The underdog is now 14-2-1 in the last 17 Northwestern games. Northwestern is 14-5-1 their last 20 as a dog. Michigan State 3-10 and their last 13 as an away favorite. Low scoring game, and I will take the home dog with the points. People overreacting, thinking that Michigan State is due. Well, I'll tell you what, playing the due system can cost you a lot of money. Yeah, and 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 the under, you know, the, the low total of 39 with a nine and a half to the dog. Um, I mean, that literally is telling you that the odds makers don't think Northwestern can put up 14 to 17 points. I don't think they could put up 14 to 17 points either. I don't see how Michigan State can put up 14 to 7 po 17 points themselves. I mean, this is a clear dog barking game. Uh, he's Ralph Michaels from wagertalk.com. And, you know, guys, uh, Teddy and Dave, they'll be back next week. But we're also going to keep these shows shorter. Uh, the College Football Betting Show has been an hour long for the first two weeks. Uh, this show will be kept to around the 35-minute mark, and we're going to try to aim to keep all of our shows around the 40-minute mark. Uh, we've done analysis. We've studied um, the uh, analytics that YouTube provides us, and we know that a lot of you drop out around then. So uh, I'm going to keep my small talk to a bare minimum, which is going to make everybody extremely happy. Uh, Ralph, we mentioned BYU before. They're playing Washington. They're plus six. Uh, we have a total of 50. S low number for Washington. Extremely high total number for BYU. Uh, I th it's at home. I, you know, I haven't given a lot of opinions out on this show, but I like the under in this game, Ralph. Uh, what are you thinking with BYU and Washington? 
Well, my power rating has this game at pick. So that has me leaning towards BI, wow. BIU. That's a huge but then, discrepancy, Ralph. It is, but it's not where I would make the line because you look at BYU and you say, wow, they went to Tennessee, they went to overtime and won. Last week against USC, they went to overtime and won. That's emotional, playing back-to-back -back overtime games. I did look up and, again, tweeted this information out so you could see it. In the last 10 years, there's only been 10 teams that have played back-to-back -back overtimes and have played at home. They are actually eight and two against the spread. So something I didn't think, but that's what happens when you look up information. There's a lot of times you have a preconceived notion that something is going to be one way when in reality it's not. With that said, BYU had this year circled. Midway through last year, Sataki pulled all his starters, started playing all his true freshmen and redshirt freshmen, knew that last year was gone, was playing towards this year year 17 returning starters all those experienced players and again you have to remember with BYU these kids are men they took four-year missions they have families it's a different mentality at BYU where they can withstand back-to-back -back overtime wins it's a close game not surprised if Washington wins but not surprised if BYU not covers to sound like an idiot Ralph uh, I am Canadian uh, and far removed from the Mormon community although I ski in Utah every year um their chastity pledge doesn't count if they're married at university or they have to remain tied in a belt with a padlock and a key until they graduate. Uh, we're keeping this to 35 minutes, so you're off topic. California. This team has surprised a lot of people, man. They're now 23rd in the country, uh, plus two and a half. Line move again. Mississippi came out at plus one and a half. Uh, now they're minus two and a half at home. And, you know, the bottom line for me is we see this a lot uh, I wouldn't want to be playing Mississippi at home. I think Mississippi's the play here, brother. Well, I think Mississippi's got a long way to go. This is an overreaction. California is not a top 25 team exactly. in the country. They happen, they happen to be 3-0 and because they beat UC Davis and they beat North Texas. And yes, they beat Washington. But let's remember in that Washington game, you almost had a four-hour rain delay was one of the most places to play. When they finally kicked off, there was nobody in the stands. It was basically a neutral game. So you ended up winning that game. You got outgained. You won 20 to 19. Uh, and your defense played very well like it always does. Here's the thing that I'm leaning with Mississippi. You know, Mississippi has new offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators this year. The new offensive coordinator is Rich Rod. Well, where did Rich Rod come from? He was the head coach at Arizona for six years. He knows Pac-12 football. Who's the new DC? Mike McIntyre. Where did Mac Ma McIntyre come from? Well, he was the Colorado head coach. He knows Pac-12 football. You have those two Pac-12 OCs and DCs that know California very well. I think that's enough of the edge in the heat and humidity for a Cal team to make that travel and play an SEC team and go down. <laughs> I'm with you 100%. Kentucky last week, what the hell happened? Uh, I actually had Florida at minus seven and a half and they covered I turned that game off. Uh, this Kentucky team looked amazing for everything but maybe the last two minutes of this game. Now they're on the road. They're playing Mississippi State. They're plus six. Total is low, Ralph, 48 and a half. What are we doing? You know, I went on a rant today on the TV, Prez, and talking about Mark Stoops. And Kentucky had the ball with two and a half minutes. And they were playing for a freaking field goal instead of trying to score a touchdown. That absolutely baffles me why teams do that. They were driving the ball. They got all the way down to the 20. What do they do? Run it into the gut, run it into the gut. And the kicker misses the field goal. Florida then breaks a long play, gets, gets the front door, gets the front door cover. Fortunate for your backers. But uh, I'm impressed with Sawyer Smith. Obviously, Terry Wilson, their quarterback, got injured and out. Sawyer Smith is a grad transfer from Troy. Last year at Troy, he was the backup. The starter got hurt. He ended up starting the last seven games, and he did very well. So it's a quarterback in that position. Kentucky's O-line and D-line both impressed me against Florida. If I didn't know the names of the team, 
Kentucky's O-line and D-line had an edge over Florida, something I didn't have ranked that way. Uh, Mississippi State, I'm going to take a pass on this because of the health of Tommy Stevens. He sat out last game. He was banged up, had some injuries. Garrett Schrader's a, a, a decent backup. If Tommy Stevens with Mississippi uh, with Sawyer Smith playing his first SEC road game, but I'm not sure if he's going to be 100% healthy. Uh, guys, you're watching the College Football Betting Show. Quick reminder, I know we're having sound issues. Don't comment on them. Um, they're being fixed. Next College Football Betting Show, we'll have Dave and uh, Teddy back with us and perfect sound quality. Uh, Ralph, there's got to be some trend about a team playing the next game after playing Alabama. They either feel really good about themselves because they don't have to play Alabama again, or they feel really bad about themselves because they just played Alabama. Well, I'll tell you what. This South Carolina team, Jake Bentley, a four-year starter, got hurt. So they went with a true freshman in uh, Ryan Helinski. Well, what did he do last week against Alabama? He had 31 first downs. I went back the last 10 years. Alabama had first downs to any SEC opponent. So you have a true freshman getting 459 yards against Alabama and 31 first downs. You got to think I'm going to like him here against Missouri, but I'm not. Now he's playing a road game. This will be his first road start as a true freshman. Missouri's offense is ready to blossom under Kelly Bryant. They had the misleading loss against Wyoming where they were minus three turnovers, but they had 28 downs and 537 yards. I like Missouri and I like the over. <coughs> oh, I was, I was so busy listening to you talk about this game. I forgot to actually pull up the, uh, the next one. UCLA. Wow, this team is terrible, man. I mean, I don't know what Chip Kelly is doing. I mean, look, it obviously still got recruits from the other coach, but uh, whoo, they got walloped by Oklahoma last week. Uh, now they're playing Washington State. They are plus 18 and a half on the road. Another small total against a big line, so to speak. In other words, it's 56 and a half with an 18 and a half. Uh, the line makers don't think uh, UCLA can put up three touchdowns, do you? Well, they didn't put up three touchdowns against three touchdowns against Ohio State. And they didn't put up three touchdowns against Oklahoma. In fact, they put up exactly 14 points in all three of those games. Uh, you know, we all know Washington State does what? They pass the ball. Mike Leach is the inventor of the air raid offense. What's UCLA's weakness? Well, really the whole team, but... Their biggest weakness is their secondary. They only have three upperclassmen out of their top 15 DBs. So they have 15 underclassmen DBs. Well, you look at UCLA stats for the year, they're allowing 71.3% complete. Uh, there's, there's no way I'm going to back UCLA. And Washington State, Mike Leach is known to put a pounding on a team if he can. Uh, he's Ralph Michaels. I'm the Prez. Uh, I was just on my phone. Uh, my kid's starting her piano lessons today. The piano teacher is standing at the door. So I have to text her, open door. <coughs> Ralph, last game, brother. What a fun show. San Diego State plus four against Utah State. Take it away. Well, we know what San Diego State is. They are a boring team. They're as boring as Michigan State. Rocky Long wants to run the ball. Rocky Long has a good 3-3-5 defense. Uh, I'm going to go on my power ratings on this game. My power ratings say San Diego State should be a two-point favorite. I'm getting over a field goal with the Aztecs at home. You know, there's no question Jordan Love is the best player in the Mountain West. Did a great job putting up 600 yards at Wake Forest. Put up 700 yards against Stony Brook. But this 3-3-5 Rocky Long defense has shut down a lot of good teams. And I think they slow Utah State enough to get the cover as a home dog. He's Ralph Michaels. I'm the Prez, the college football show in the bag. Uh, Ralph, thanks so much for stepping in on incredibly late notice. We love having you. Uh, we'll get you on uh, more often. You're going to be on Morning Joe a lot. Uh, listeners, thank you uh, so kindly. 
uh, for all the positive comments. Don't mention my sound. I'm on it. Yeah, It'll I, be fixed. Ralph. Hell, uh, Prez, I'm going to go on and mention the sound now just because you've said it four times. Yeah, more than that, brother. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out the NFL Presidential Address with Kelly and I, and we'll see you next week on the College Football Betting Show.